Hey there, welcome to another week of Dr. Tell Me Why, a YouTube channel that's dedicated to teaching you guys all about medicine. This is basically a health education channel, because who needs doctors anyway? <laughs> so if that's the sort of content that you want to see here on YouTube, then you should definitely hit that subscribe button. If not, then you should watch the video to the very end and maybe I can change your mind. I mean, who knows, it's 2020 and as we both know, anything can happen in 2020. <laughs> So scientists performed an experiment 20 years ago where patients with Parkinson's disease were given a fake drug, a sugar pill. Patients were told that the sugar pill was in fact a new powerful anti-Parkinsonian drug that was meant to improve their motor functions. The scientists were really surprised, however, when they observed that the patients had actually responded to the fake drug, showing improved and faster hand motion. And when they conducted PET scans on the brains of these patients, they found that the sugar pills had actually activated areas of the brain that were known to be involved in dopamine production. It seemed there was a mysterious yet very powerful and very real force at play here. And that mysterious force is none other than the placebo effect. I'll be explaining what the placebo effect is and why not all placebos are equal and what that tells us about the placebo effect in general. Towards the end of the video I'll also be touching on placebo's more evil twin, the nocebo or the nocebo effect. And so stay tuned and I expect you won't be disappointed. The placebo effect is a powerful neuropsychological phenomenon where it seems that believing that something will make you feel better really does have the effect of making you feel better. This is such a big idea because it has the potential of improving patient outcomes. And so, since at least the 1950s, we've been using the placebo effect to test out new drugs before bringing them out to market. However, more recently, scientists have been able to demonstrate that simply giving a patient a sugar pill or a water injection and telling them that it's the real deal could lead to dramatic improvements in pain, ADHD, insomnia, depression, as well as Parkinson's disease, which we mentioned earlier. But we also know that not all placebos are created equally. For example, the placebo effect will be stronger with a capsule than with a tablet. An injection gives off a stronger placebo effect than a capsule. And a machine gives off the best or the strongest placebo effect. This is despite the fact that they're all fake drugs. Moreover, if you give a patient a branded placebo, that's more likely to make them feel better than the same generic placebo. And a friendly chat with the doctor beforehand tends to exaggerate the placebo effect. And so, looking at all these examples, you realize that the cornerstone of the placebo effect is expectation. The reason why a placebo capsule works better than a placebo tablet at improving a patient's symptoms or a patient's condition is because patients typically think capsules are stronger or capsules work better. It's also the same reason why branded placebos work better than generic ones. It's because patients think more highly of Panadol than they do of Paracetamol. Expectation really is the cornerstone of the placebo effect. But how does expectation work to produce the placebo effect? Expectation is essentially a learned response where your mind uses different types of environmental cues, things like social, verbal, or condition cues from past or previous experiences, generalizing them and then projecting them onto situations that are happening right now or situations that are yet to happen in the future. For example, typically as a society, we tend to think of more expensive branded items as being of higher quality. And that's probably the same reason why we think of branded drugs or branded placebos as being better than generic ones. That's an example of a social cue. Meanwhile, verbal cues could be as simple as a doctor prescribing a drug for you and telling you that that drug will make you feel better. And so you expect to feel better and that expectation can actually result in you feeling better. We also know that genetics plays a huge role in the placebo effect and analyzing the genetic differences between those who respond really poorly to placebos versus those who respond really well to them showed that the placebo effect is dependent on four brain systems. So at this stage you must be wondering why we don't just use sugar pills to treat just about everyone. <laughs> 
Well, it's mostly to do with ethics. In medical practice, you can't really lie to your patients. You can't really prescribe them one thing while giving them something that's completely different. I mean, that's totally not cool. It goes against principles of patient autonomy. It would make Hippocrates really angry. But guess what? Placebos still work even if patients are told that they are receiving nothing more than a placebo and that any benefit that they are likely to experience will be a result of the placebo effect rather than a result of the drug that they are being prescribed. An influential 2010 study beautifully illustrated this point. In this 2010 study, patients who had IBS experienced improved symptoms even when they were told that they were receiving nothing other than a placebo. This could help overcome some of the ethical concerns involved in prescribing a placebo therapeutically in medical practice. But placebos aren't all good. Scientists have been able to demonstrate that patients could experience adverse side effects to a drug even when that drug that they are being given is nothing more than a sugar pill. In fact, in one study, over 10% of patients dropped out after experiencing severe pain and severe nausea despite being given nothing other than a placebo. This is known as a nocebo, and while I would love to go into more detail about nocebos and what they are, I'm actually filming this at 4am, <laughs> and I think it's time for me to get some sleep. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then make sure you hit that like button. What hitting the like button does is it tells the YouTube algorithm that you thought my content was worthwhile and that you would recommend YouTube recommending my video to other people. If you really love this video then you should definitely hit that subscribe button. It would make me really happy if you did, you could join me on this journey on YouTube and I mean it's also the best way to keep tabs on all the great medical content that I have lined up for you guys. Anyway, that's it for today and I expect to see you guys all next week because I suppose if I expect something, then it will definitely happen, right? That's not how placebos work. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs>